Welcome back to the finish line in association with Bedapin.com. For all the latest odds from the world leading bookmakers, head over to Bedapin.com. So after a bumper weekend of racing, we're going to have our weekend review and look back on the races that we previewed on our last video. So we start off at Ascot and we start with the Riddlestown Novice Chase. So Mr. Malarkey came out on top on this as myself and Tom predicted that it would be ran at a breakneck gallop with Neil McGinty, Yaltari and Topville Ben all taking each other on for lead. And it kind of came out the way we predicted it with Mr. Malarkey coming in at the home bend, siding through the lot of them and going off to win. But it didn't look as easy as that as the second Mr. Malarkey hit the front, he didn't do a tap. And on the back of that, Robbie Power said where he shouldn't have said that he's going for the four Moidock because he is lazy as they come. And he's now installed a 10 to 1 for the four Moidock at Shetland. And on the back of that, he looks like a proper horse to have a right chance in that now. So he put in a good performance in that and a 10 to 1 for the National Hunt Chase, he's one to have a look at. So next we'll go on to the Denman Chase. And this saw Klandazobo cement his place at the top of the Gold Cup betting. Um, he done this very impressively, even at odds of two to five. He jumped, he travelled, he was on the bridle, he was kind of behind the bridle the whole way. And the second Harry Cobden jumped upside Terrafort just after the last, he gave him a little, or just before the last, he gave him a little flick of the reins and he was on the bridle and my God, he took off. He is after impressing me now, and I really think he has a big chance of winning the Gold Cup, especially after presenting Percy not running the weekend. And no one knows what his plans are yet. Does talk some run in the Bobby Joe chase um, on the weekend. But on the back of that, he's into 6 to 1 best price. And that still looks a nice price for what he's done. He's by, I think he's by far the best at English challengers, better than Nate River, because we've only seen him once. And going on the weather as it is, I think the ground might be going against him as it is. So, yeah, I think Clanders always had to cement his place at a right, proper Gold Cup challenger. So next, it's on to the Betfair Hurdle. And this scene, the Nigel Tristan Davis and Sam Tristan Davis ridden Al Dancer take it. Now, this was run at a very slow pace for the first few furlongs. And it paid to be with the pace for the whole way, as you've seen with um, 100 to one shot, um, oh, name's gone up my head, he finished third, and Al Lancer was tracking that pace the whole way. The first, it's actually the first three in the race were the first four going around the whole way, and Al Lancer, he pulled, he pulled a lot the whole way around there. He came to the challenge too, picked up well, he's, he's going to go supreme now after that, he done it well, but, um, Betfair Hardware winners don't have a great record in the Supreme, so I would still gladly pass him over on that. Um, one, one runner to mark up in that would be Getaway Trump, because he was out the back the whole way, came with his challenge just as before it came in the home turn, but the bird was flown by then, and he was getting there at the end, but as I said, it paid to be up the pace because they were gone by the time he got rolling. So I'd keep, a, keep him on the right side, Getaway Trump, so next we go on to the Bedford Chase where we finally seen waiting patiently. But he was put in his place and put in his place big time by surname, who myself I crapped. I didn't think he was anywhere near a grade one horse. But he absolutely thumped a lot of them by a good 11 lengths. There was at least three lengths jumping the second last and Harry Copton just said go on him. And he took off like an aeroplane. Uh, this is at the blot and waiting patiently. He's Fan club, big time. There's been absolute murder on the internet all the time over this though. I haven't been a fan of him. I won't be a fan of him after this either. Uh, he looks awkward. He doesn't, for me, he doesn't look that genuine when you pressure comes on. He doesn't give everything. Even when he bet um, Q card in the same race last year, he was kind of, he was carted into the race and carted into going to the front. There's one I'll take out of this is Fox Norton. I dropped down on the trip. He looks like a proper two mile stayer. So drop down from 2 4 will from 2 4 will see him very, very well coming up to Cheltenham. So he's he could be one for the champion chase 
Toronto plays against against Altior. But surname going right hand that looks an absolute monster. If they seem to, he's a young horse. Paul Nichols had an unbelievable day with eight winners, I think he had on the day. Um, yeah, I think this surname is one to look out for to injury or even Punchestown festivals coming up over the spring. Uh, next, uh, we'll go to Ireland and the Red Mills hurdle. So this scene, um, Drasso absolutely annihilates what looked a kind of competitive field. He was back from fours into twos. He put the bed to, the race to bed in the matter of strides from about three furlongs out. Jumped well, travelled well. He looks like a horse on the up. And this is after cementing my enthusiasm with Lur uh, Limini for the mayor's, the mayor's hurdle on the first day of Chetlin. Because Limini was seven lengths in front of him on that day. And if Limini comes on from that again, I think 8-1 at that again is going to be a huge price. But uh, for Drasso, I think Supreme is next up for him. He'll have a shout in it. It's a very open Supreme this year. And I wouldn't put anyone off having a bet on him because Joseph O'Brien has his horses in flying form and he could be the man to get even a bit more improvement out of him. So Drasso was a very good winner of that and Supreme next up for him and he's going to have a cracking chance at that. Next, we're on to the Red Mills Chase and where we've seen Monon Lee do what we thought he'd do and dump his rival silly and put the bed to race very easily. The Annabelle Fly was second in this. It was a very good prep run for the Gold Cup. Uh, Ed Wolf looks shallow as for himself and Claude de Fick looks like he's at that. He probably fell out of love with jumping fences two seasons ago. I think they should stick to him back over hurls and I wouldn't be surprised if you see him running the world hurdle. But more on the winner, Monley. Uh, Give him weight away to most. Rachel gave him a cracking ride. Saved a bit for the straight. Jumped two out, jumped three out the... The margin of victory kept growing and growing and growing and I think he was just idling a bit in front when Annabelle Fly started closing on him. On my opinion, if I owned the horse, I'd go Ryanair now. I don't think he's a true three miles there, let alone a three mile two Gold Cup. So he's about eight, ten to one for the, for the Ryanair and on a bit of good ground, I think he'd have a cracking chance in that. So that's Saturday done and we're just going to quickly go on to Sunday and the buying hurdle where to everyone's amazed well I say amazement we've seen Tiger Roll win the buying hurdle at 25 to 1 he looks absolutely amazing doing this he travelled he jumped he didn't miss a beat came there to the last Keith Donhu just flicked him over the last and off he went if this thing doesn't win the cross country at Cheltenham there's no justice in the world. He's absolute, he's a credit to the owner, to the trainer. If I owned him now, I'd probably cry every time he ran. He's absolutely a superstar. I can't see him being better. Cheltenham's now 11 to 10 on, or not 11 to 10 on, he's 11 to 10 against. There's nothing in the going to beat him. The rest of the field, whether they ran disappointing or not, or just Tiger Roll is a class above him. It was a very, very good performance. And all roads lead to cross country now for Tiger Roll. Uh, so then the, the main chase on the cat card was the 10 up novice chase where the Henry de Bromhead train, Chris's dream, fought out a great finish with a um, champagne classic to win by a half a length. Now they changed tactics with Chris's dream in this and they held him up, which seemed to work a treat because he switched off nicely, he jumped perfectly, Rachel gave him a great ride. Only blip he had was that the last where he thrown himself out to the left, whether that be bravery or novice, he got it done very well. And with Champagne Classic, where we thought that he would come on for the run, just looked like he's kind of one pace. And I wouldn't be surprised if they try they try him over hurdles again this season in an aim for stepping him up to say the four mile or next year as it comes around. And for any second now was third in this and it's only a matter of time before this fella breaks his duck and I think he's going to do it in one of the big handicaps I won the festivals this season. He's been just getting bet by very, very good horses. And I think between two and a half, three miles is his trip. 
and have a look at it. Whatever he runs in, he's going to be a good, a good price in the handicaps. And I would not put off anyone back in this fella coming to spring festivals. So it's any second now. Um, there's one that ran on Friday that's after throwing his hat into the Arkle out of nowhere. And that's Glenn Forsett, the Mick Shannon trained uh, Jonathan Burke ridden. This horse has won two handicaps this season and from the front and absolutely annihilated his field. And he'd done the same on Friday at Sandown against Kalashnikov, who was the second favourite before this, this race was ran. He's now in the 6-1, to 6-7-1. to one. And if he continues on this improvement, I'm what, in what looks like a very, very open arc, I think this Glenn Force will play a big hand at 8-1. to one. He jumps impeccably. He has a high cruising speed and Johnny Burke gets on great with him. He knows when to push the button, when to put on the pace. So Glenn Force and Yarkel at 7, 8 to 1 could be one to look out to on the day. I know he's entered in handicaps, but after that run on Friday, I couldn't see him going in handicaps. Now I'd say all road leads to the Yarkel on the first day at Cheltenham. Yeah, so that's a quick look back on the weekend's racing. So hopefully Tom will be back on Friday, Thursday or Friday to do another weekend preview. So again, as thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and we'll see you again on the weekend. <laughs>